What is up you lovely people and welcome to this in-depth fist guide. If you're looking to master the title trickster, this is the guide for you. Let's start by taking a look at Fizz's abilities. Fizz's passive allows you to move through minions, which is extremely useful in the early laning phase. Use this to your advantage to try to farm minions by moving in between minions. On top of that, you'll get reduced damage reduction from auto attacks, which is also very useful because you get poked a lot since you're a melee champion. Your Q is primarily a gap closer, but can also be used to gain distance on the enemy since it will always travel a set distance. This means if you use it on a target at maximum range, you'll end up right on top of them. But if you use it on a target closer to you, you'll end up behind them. This will also apply any unhit effects such as your W or Lich Bane. Your W is a passive and active bleed effect that will deal more damage depending on the enemy's health. If not activated, every attack will deal a little bit of uh, damage over time, and if you activate the effect, you will deal more damage and apply Grievous Wounds, which will reduce any healing on the enemy affected by 50% for 3 seconds, which is extremely useful to take down enemies like Nidalee, Mundo, or champions that highly rely on healing effects. The best way of using your W is to activate it right before you use your Q. Since your Q applies on hit effects, it will also apply your W passive. Fizz's E is his bread and butter. Knowing when and how to use this spell is often what makes a difference between a good and a bad Fizz player. This spell will make you untargetable for a short duration. You can reactivate the ability to fall down quicker and travel a further distance. This is great for chasing. Or wait and fall back on the ground to deal damage in a bigger radius. This is great for farming and killing multiple enemies at the same time. If you wait, it will also slow the enemies down by 60%. Your ultimate has many different uses. For example, it can be used to block an enemy's animation mid-air and save your teammates. Your ultimate can also be used as a long-range nuke, for example. But still, the best way of using your ultimate is probably to engage fights, such as this one. Alright, enough of the abilities, let's check out the runes and masteries for Fizz. Alright, the first page is 30-0-0. Now this is a very risky page that will maximize your early damage. It's very fun to run in normals, but I wouldn't recommend doing this in ranked games if you're new to Fizz. This is really for professional Fizz players that know exactly what they're doing and want to maximize their early game damage. The second page is 2109, which is the most common mastery page for Fizz. This one is a bit safer, but it will also be better for late game since it will give you cooldown reduction and utility, and also buff duration. For runes, I run flat AP quints, armor seals, magic resistant glyphs, and magic penetration marks. Most of the pro fist players like Froggen or Burkson run this rune page. It is a generally effective rune page for any AP mid, and armor is essential for Fizz in the early game. Since he's melee, he tends to get harassed a lot by auto attacks and armor will reduce that damage. Fizz is definitely not the strongest early game champion. He has a lot of trouble farming since he's melee with no poke ability. Before level 3, you want to play extremely passive and only farm the minions that are safe to farm without taking too much damage. Upon hitting level 3, you can start using your WQ combo followed by one or two auto attacks onto the enemy. You can also use E to do damage or to fall back. This will help you settle your lane presence and often make your opponent afraid of you, therefore making it easier to farm. Since you want to be running a Knight Teleport, always look out for ganking opportunities as early as level 4 or 5. 
This is game breaking for Fizz, since he is one of the biggest snowball champion that can make the most out of early kills. Fizz is a very, very good duelist. For this reason, you should always be looking out for fights and trying to pick up kills on the enemy jungler if possible. Here, I notice Vi is going to go do her raid since she was ganking mid, and I decide I'm going to go pick her off. Learning how to escape on Fizz is very important, and you do that by using your E mostly. Learning how to E over walls is very important as it can make you live through some impossible situations. Make sure to make full advantage of your mobility on Fizz. Yes, it can be very good to escape, but it can also be very good to actually pick off enemies. Knowing exactly how much damage you can deal on Fizz in the mid game is very important. In this 2v4 fight, I knew we could win since I had all of my cooldowns up. I open on Kennen, taking him down in a blink of an eye. Knowing I'm about to get bursted down, I use my Zhongas under the tower to wait for some of my cooldowns, and then re-engage onto Vi, using my Q to gain distance from Mundo and Mord, and going in the bush to wait again for some of my cooldowns. I re-engage onto Mord, taking him down in an instant, and then we finish off Mundo. Making this 2v4, resulting in 4 kills for us, and no death. The late game potential on Fizz is amazing. Once you have Zanyas and Guardian Angels, you count as like 3 or 4 people. In this fight, I'm able to demonstrate just that. This is a 1v4. I still decide to fight it because I know that my Jukin potential is huge. Notice here, I see an opportunity to go on Kennen and burst him down and I do it. They blow 2 ultimates on me right there. I decide to use my Zanyas to mitigate some of the damage. Then, I decide to go for Mordekaiser who flashed over the wall. I do end up getting caught by Vi, but I still have time to use my just in time to pick up the kill on Mordekaiser. My Guardian Angel goes down, and I do end up dying, but my kill picks up the last two kills, and we end up getting four kills for one death in this fight, and win the game. Building Fizz is not a very complicated thing. I personally enjoy studying with Flask and 3 health potions since I know I tend to get harassed a lot in the lane, and the sustain from Flask allows me to stay in lane longer and farm up. You can also start with a Dorn's Ring and 2 health potions, I know some pros like to do that. You can also stay in spawn and wait 8-10 to 10 seconds if you start with Flask to get a 4th potion if you feel the lane is going to be hard, you will not miss any minions if you do this correctly. Mostly, my call to back on Fizz is when I get around 1000 gold in lane. I know that is where I will be able to back and purchase two Dorn's Ring and some pots. The two Dorn's Ring on Fizz are very, very important and extremely popular on most pro players because they compensate for your early weakness and allow you to snowball and become a bully faster. After I get my Dorn's Rings, I wait until I obtain about 1200 to 1300 gold and go back to purchase a Sheen. Once you get Sheen, your damage output will greatly increase since you will deal extra damage every time you use your Q. If the next time you back after your Sheen you only have under 1k, either purchase Blasting Wand or Boots. Once you're done with Lich Bane, start building Zanyas immediately. Some people tend to get Zanyas before Lich Bane in some situations. Playing against a Zed for example that is highly attack damage oriented, Giving the armor from Zonyas is very useful. Also, the active status is also very good for his ultimate. So, playing versus Zed, you could go for Zonyas Hourglass, but it's not necessary. After I'm done with Lich Bane and Zonyas Hourglass, I try to go for a little bit more AP items before I start building defensively. I tend to go for a Void Stab because the magic penetration is extremely good at this point in the game since most people have gotten a few defensive items. If I do have a lot of gold though, I might go for a Rabadon's Dead Cap or a Deadfire's Grasp. I almost always end up the game getting a Guardian Angels if I have time to build it. 
I really hope you guys enjoyed the guide and if you did make sure to subscribe and like for more and go try Fizz out because once you get to know some of his tricks he is one of the most amazing champions to play with seemingly unlimited tricks up his sleeves. I'll leave you with some of my personal favorite plays from some of my games so you guys can enjoy a bit more of Fizz madness. See you guys.